how do I solve quadratic equations? There are many different methods. Today we are going to do the zero product property or use the zero product property to solve quadratic equations. Zero product, so basically what it means is if you are multiplying two numbers and you are getting zero as the answer, well, what has to be true about these numbers? Well, if this number was five, five times what gives you zero? Zero has to be zero. Or if it was negative three, negative three times what gives you zero? Zero. So basically the zero product property says that if you are multiplying two numbers, one of these numbers has to be zero at least. Either the first one can be zero or the second one can be zero, but one of them has to be zero. So let's use that as we have these factored quadratics. Okay, so I took the liberty of already pre-factoring this for you. So now you have two factors and we set them equal to zero. So this number times this number equals zero. Well, either this first number here, x plus three, can be equal to zero. Now, x here is not three. You can't just take this number. It has to be when we're solving for x, okay, we're solving for x, we have to know what value of x can you plug in here to make this equal zero. So what number can you plug in for x, add 3, and get 0? Hopefully some of us are thinking negative 3. Or this factor over here can be equal to 0. A whole factor, we don't just say x is equal to 0. If you plugged in 0, you would get negative 4, right? So we want to know what value of x would you put here so you subtract 4 and get zero. And some of us are already thinking that that number is four, but what if those numbers don't come to us? This is what we are going to do. So we are going to take this factor and do exactly what we said. And we're going to say, well, let's make that first factor equal to zero. Let's make that second factor equal to zero. And now we have these two little baby equations and we're going to solve minus three, x equals negative three, Add 4, and x is equal to 4. There are two different solutions. Both of them work. You can either plug in negative 3, and by the way, whenever you substitute in, you pick an answer and you commit to it. This negative 3 would be plugged into both x's, and it would work. That's your first option. A second option would be 4. And this 4 gets plugged into both. 4 minus 4 is 0. Doesn't matter that if you plug 4 in over here, it's 7. 7 times 0 is still 0. So just remember, even though there's this, you can't plug in this value of x on this side and this value of x on this side at the same time. You have to pick one variable and use it for every x in the equation and then go back and do the second one. Two answers. Here's number two. For number two over here, okay, well, we have one, two factors. Either this first factor is zero, and that's kind of already solved for us, or this second factor is equal to zero. Add five, and x is equal to five. Once again, two different solutions numbers three and four. For this one, okay, kind of like, I'm gonna make sure I can still see number two a little bit. This one had an x out in front by itself. That's a variable. A variable we can set equal to zero, a number we can't. When there is a number, a constant, standing alone out here as a factor, we just ignore it. Doesn't mean anything. You can't set two equal to zero, because two is two. So this factor we can set equal to zero. Add 7, 
and x is equal to 7. And this factor, x plus 10 equals 0, oops, minus 10, and x can be equal to negative 10. Two different answers. You can either write them this way. Frequently you will see answers listed. This is how we list the answers. 7 comma negative 10. The comma separates the different answers and it's listing them. So if you think back and remember when we did ordered pairs, when we had ordered pairs like x comma y and you would plot the point, then we also had commas in between, but what was really important then was the parentheses because the parentheses implied that it was an ordered pair. And I know I was kind of a stickler on that. And now you see that you can have two numbers with a comma in the middle, not an ordered pair. They are just different answers for x because we're listing them. Number four. Okay. So this guy over here, oh, look, there's one, two, three different factors, three different x's. When we had two x's, we had two answers. Here we have three axes, so we should get three answers. Well, this one here says x equals zero. And this guy here, oh look, 2x minus three equals zero. This one's a little bit more complicated than all the other equations. Add three, 2x is equal to three divided by two three halves. This guy over here, 5x plus 1 equals 0. Minus 1 to the other side, negative 1 divided by 5. So your solutions here for x are 0, 3 halves, and negative 1 fifth. I was going to say, because I kind of started to see a pattern here, where this factor, it was a plus 3, and the answer was negative 3. This factor was minus 4, and the answer was positive 4. Minus 5 gave us the answer of positive 5, so I kind of even knew before doing anything that this minus 7 would give me a plus 7, and the plus 10 would give me a negative 10 as a solution. If there is no coefficient in the front, because that was the the, the like quality for the first three, then you can essentially just take the opposite of this guy. As soon as you put a coefficient in the front, it changes the game because you do need to divide. So here, minus three, well, it is a positive three. You have to divide by the two. So you may as well write the equation and solve. Okay, so that's the first few. Let's keep going. Number five. So for this one right here, look, x squared, and then there's this, this, and this. Well, x squared is really x times x. So it's like I have 1, 2, 3, 4, oops, 4, and 5. I have five different factors. So I'm kind of expecting five solutions. Let's see what happens. Well, these guys here are the same. x equals 0. That's going to give us the same answer. So I don't have to write 0 twice, just once x minus 1 is also a factor. Well, that's going to give me the same answer. Since there's no coefficient, I'm going to do that whole opposite thing. So I know that that is one of my solutions, x equals 1. And it's the same solution for both of these. I'm not writing it twice, because 1 is 1. I don't have to write it twice. And then there's this guy here. Well, you know what? I'm going to write this out, because it will help me minus 7. Negative 7. Don't forget to do opposites when you go to the other side of the equal sign. Divide by 4 divided by 4, and x is equal to negative 7 fourths. That is also one of your answers. You know what? I'll list them this way. That way I kind of get them all together. Those are our three answers. We were expecting 5, but we see that sometimes even though we're expecting 5 answers, we don't get 5 answers because some of them, or some of the factors, will yield the same answer. Moving on. Okay. Those guys were already factored. These weren't, so let's factor them. Two sets of parentheses. X in the beginning of each. Multiply to get a negative. Multiply to 24. Subtract to get 2. 
So our numbers are 6 and 4. Negative goes with the 6. Hopefully pretty soon you guys are factoring that quickly. Opposite, opposite. X is equal to negative 4 and opposite, positive 6. Finished. Moving on to number 7. And see this? This was an X squared. X squared gave me two solutions. Moving over here. Two sets of parentheses. M in the beginning. Multiply to 25. Add to 10. Plus 5 plus 5. M is equal to minus 5 minus 5. Well, here there's an M squared. I was expecting two solutions, but I see my two factors that both give me the same solution, and that's why I only have one solution. Moving on to number 8. So this guy here, I have to factor it. GCF first. X squared minus 16. This guy is X plus 4 and X minus 4. One, two, three factors, and your solutions are zero, negative four, and positive four. The last guy here for number nine, I do have something common. I'm going to pull it out. A squared minus 5A plus 6 equals zero. If there's a square, always try to factor again. Two sets of parentheses. A in the beginning, multiply to a positive, must be minus, minus. Um, and it's got to be a 3 and a 2. Don't forget that A. And I have 1, 2, 3 factors. I'll get 3 answers. Hey, look, it's cubed. So I'm expecting 3 answers. I'm about to get them. So my answers are 0, positive 3, and positive 2. 